We are here today to disclose the truth about a subject that has been ridiculed and questioned, denied for at least 50 years. The men and women who are on this stage and the some 350 additional military intelligence witnesses to the so-called UFO matter and extraterrestrial intelligence can prove. And, and we decided that it was time for civilians and we decided that it was time for civilians, military, intelligence, and other people to come together to disclose the truth about the subject which is called UFOs. Since that time, I have personally briefed a sitting director of Central Intelligence, James Woolsey, President Clinton's first CIA director. I have personally briefed the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the head of Intelligence Joint Staff, members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, many members of Congress, members of the European leadership, the Japanese cabinet and others. And what I have found is that none of them are surprised that this is true, but they are uniformly horrified that they have not had access to these projects. We can establish through these witnesses whom we have identified, which now number over 400, and these are people who have been inside the CIA, NSA, NRO, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army, all divisions of the intelligence and military community, as well as corporate witnesses, contractors to the government. And these are folks who have been involved in so-called black budget or covert unacknowledged projects. These unacknowledged special access projects are taking in at least 40 to 80 billion dollars per year and they are sitting on technologies that can change the world forever. The reason we are coming forward now is that we are asking for the U.S. Congress and for President Bush to move towards an official inquiry and disclosure on this subject. It has the most profound implications for the human future, for the U.S. national security, and for world peace. Specifically, technologies connected to UFO and extraterrestrial vehicles, if declassified and used for peaceful energy generation and propulsion, would solve the looming energy crisis definitively, would end global warming, would correct the environmental challenges that the Earth is facing. It is also critical that we begin to debate as a society the propriety of placing weapons in space. If indeed, as we can prove, it is true that we are not alone and that space is territory which we are sharing with other civilizations, it could be a very imprudent, destabilizing thing to place weapons in space. This is not being debated because it is off the national and international radar screens. It needs to be placed on it and we are here today to do it. We can establish through this testimony that these objects of extraterrestrial origin have been tracked on radar going thousands of miles per hour, stopping and making right-hand turns. That they use anti-gravity propulsion systems, which we have already figured out how they work in classified projects in the United States, Great Britain, and elsewhere. That these objects have landed on terra firma, at times have been disabled, and have been retrieved specifically by teams within the United States that extraterrestrial life forms have been retrieved and their vehicles have been taken and studied thoroughly for at least 50 years. We can prove through the testimony and documents that we will be presenting that this subject has been hidden from members of Congress and at least two administrations that we are aware of presidential administrations, and that the Constitution of the United States has been subverted by the growing power of these classified projects, and that this is a danger to the national security. There is no evidence, I wish to emphasize, that these life forms from elsewhere are hostile towards us, but there is a great deal of evidence that they are concerned with our hostility. There are times when they have neutralized or rendered inert 
the launch capabilities of intercontinental ballistic missiles, witnesses here today will describe those events to you. They have shown clearly that they do not want us to weaponize space, and yet we are proceeding down that dangerous path. And it will be established that these projects, because they have not been supervised properly by the Congress, by the U.S. President, by the international community, have become a threat to the national security. And for this reason, we feel we must disclose the facts. This is the beginning of the campaign for disclosure. And in a memo that I wrote to President Bush last week, I have stated that this campaign will persist until our goals are met, and they are as follows that we have open, honest hearings on the subject in the U.S. Congress, that there be a permanent ban on the weaponization of space or the targeting of any objects of extraterrestrial origin, that there be a full and complete study of classified technologies connected to this subject to see how they could be properly declassified and applied for peaceful energy generation so that the world may get off of fossil fuels in enough time to prevent greater ecosystem damage or war over the looming energy crisis which is sure to sweep the earth in the coming decade. This is a matter of the most pressing import. It has been ridiculed, yes. I know many in the media would like to talk about little green men. But in reality, the subject is laughed at because it is so serious. I have had grown men, men weep who are in the Pentagon, who are members of Congress, and who have said to me, what are we going to do? Here's what we will do. We will see that this matter is properly disclosed. And these courageous witnesses, the first 21 of over 100 that we have already interviewed on videotape, have stepped forward to speak the truth. Now, I expect people to be skeptical, but not irrationally so, because these men and women have come forward and they have their credentials, they can establish who they are, and they have been first-hand witnesses to some of the most important events in the history of the human race. As was pointed out to me by some of the men here, they were charged with handling the nuclear weapons of the United States. Their word was trusted on everything of great importance for the national security. We must trust their word now. As Monsignor Balducci said at the Vatican, in an interview I had with him recently, it is irrational not to accept the testimony of these witnesses. So please be skeptical, but that is not the same as prejudiced and closed-minded. This is a matter of great importance, and I ask the media, the scientific community, and the political community to look seriously at this matter and to do the right thing for humanity and for our children. We have available for the media and for members of Congress a nearly 500-page briefing document with transcripts from dozens of these top secret witnesses. We have a four-hour videotape summary, it's not a commercial product, I'll warn you, from this project of the 120 hours that we have in interviews so far. They've been boiled down to four hours and it's available for the Congress to review and for the major media to review. We can establish that this subject is real and has tremendous significance for the human future. I ask on all of you who are listening to contact the members of Congress that represent you and the leaders around the world and other countries and ask them to hold an honest inquiry into this subject to support a ban on weaponizing space since we are sharing space with other life forms and that we move quickly as a people to understanding that this is the end of the childhood of the human race. It is time for us to become mature adults in the cosmic civilizations out there. To do this, we must become a peaceful civilization. 
and we must look as we go into space with an intent of cooperating